Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Literature, where we apply the revolutionary mod skill to classic and contemporary works of prose. So, join us once again, won't you? Hello, uh, happy holidays, and welcome to another episode of the Lost Signals Reviews Literature. My name is Chris Morgan. I am here with Jonathan Ian Manzer. The Pusher Man. Scott Thurlow. Just looking for a fix, dude. And Stephen Ramosi. And I'm just looking for a car to wipe down. <laughs> and tonight we are discussing William S. Burroughs' Junkies Christmas, um, which is part of a compilation. Um, oh, crap. It, inter. I don't remember the name of it. I either. can't remember the yeah, name of it. I can't help you here. Yeah, it was a compilation released in 1989. Interzone. That was it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Steve-O, why don't you start us off with the log line? All right. Uh, this is the Junk Sick Car Wiper Blues. Part two, yes. <laughs> Hip, man. <laughs> All right, Hip, and indeed. Steve, why don't you continue with the plot? Absolutely. Uh, so this story begins with Danny the car wiper getting out of jail. Uh, he is junk sick and has no money. And pretty much the whole story comes out of that. He's basically wandering around looking for... It's a Christmas carol with heroin. Oh, right. Oh, uh, on should've Christmas come, Day, by the way. I, sh- I should have mentioned... Uh, and he, he wanders around looking for something, some way to get some money so that he can get some heroin so that he can go, uh, do a heroin. you know, do some heroin. <laughs> and uh, it's a really, you know, interesting description through the eyes of, uh, somebody who's like going through withdrawal symptoms. Um, he eventually finds a briefcase that has severed legs in it. Dumps the legs, you know, whatever, and you not of use to him, and sells the briefcase to get three bucks to go get some. He goes, he goes, finds a doctor, gets some drugs of some kind. Uh, I don't think it's straight heroin, but it's morphine. Gets gets it ready to fix, you know, get gets himself a fix ready, and then here's somebody who needs it more, and in the true Christmas spirit, <laughs> gives it to somebody who has some kidney stones. It's like a gift to the mad guy yeah. with heroin. I was yeah. gonna. Keep doing that a little bit throughout. But. <laughs> yeah. It's like a wonderful life with heroin. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and he is rewarded by still, you know, being on the nod at the end. Yeah. I, and, and, well, he's, and he's on the nod. Is he, though? See, I was going to say, I thought that was sort of an open thing. Like, yeah. I it, agree. Knowing Burroughs and knowing, if you don't know who he is, he himself, in fact, was a heroin user slash addict for many years, as well as other drugs. But, like, clearly, he his writing is influenced by that experience and his mm-hmm. time doing that. So I'm just saying, like, to me, it was more an open ended kind of a thing. At mm-hmm. the end, but and the line does say he's on the nod. Yeah, but the I Christmas think that's spirit is, is what just as high. good yeah. as heroin. Yeah, yeah, take it that way. But I don't know if it's a, absolutely that. Was all I'm saying. Um. Anyway, sorry. But yeah, it, 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 I think this story does a really good job. It has a very natural flow. I think that for such a short story, it's got a very defined parts to it. Mm. Um, yeah, that's true. I don't know why I added an A before that. It's got very defined <laughs> parts to it, <laughs> and. I, yeah, you know, I, I think that it does a really, really good job of kind of keeping a, a, a structure uh, intact for, like, a lot better than a lot of the other short stories that we read. And sometimes, they, you know, they don't need them that specifically, but this one, this one happens to I really that. like the plot structure of it, and I'm going to probably give it full marks unless somebody has some, some other, you know, if, unless somebody can convince me otherwise. Uh, no, I'm probably looking at a solid three myself. Yeah, it's like, it's funny to me because I've never read this particular Burroughs story, which I also said about the last Hemingway story we did, which was recently as well. But they sort of remind me of one another in like a very broad sense. And I'll get to that in style maybe, but just, and also just the way, the angle they took about life and writing about it as well. So yeah, I think you're right, Steve-O. Like you can almost cut this up into acts, very small acts, but clear and distinct ones. Mm-hmm. And for a very short story, like four or five pages, if that that this is, I think that's you know always going to be a mark for in favor of something. And I think it tells a story. It needs to tell the Burroughs wanted to in a clear enough way. And even if I do argue that the ending may be a little, you know, blurry, like unclear, not unclear, just that you can take out of it what you wish instead of like being something definitive. But I still think it works because of that either way. And I think it's a well done, very short tale of, you know, a day in the life of a, a down in his luck person. So as a former drug addict myself, mm-hmm. uh, this is very... I think a good representation for the first two thirds of what uh, 
you know, like, I think that Velvet Underground's Waiting for My Man <laughs> is a better representation of what it's like to try to score drugs. Mm. But uh, the part is that Christmas or not, you're not giving up some drugs. <laughs> you don't think it's some, realistic? Uh, uh, the Christmas spirit is not that It's not strong. override. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is not about helping other people. Uh, this is about buying things for yourself. So uh, specifically, drugs. Swindling them somehow, <laughs> yes. But no, I, I think overall it's a very well-told story. Uh, so many of the full marks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really have much more to add except to say I'm definitely going to give it full marks. I do remember um, reading this when, <clears throat> excuse me, I was taking classes over the summer, and out of this all, summer, no, no, all right, this, all right, this just, is just a summer. Back when I was in college, and. Um, and to me, to be honest with you, was that all, what summer was that? He was hanging out summer with summer of love at the time. It was the summer of love. I think it was ninety three or ninety four. So this just came out when you uh... <laughs> actually it had come out four years prior. Yes. And I actually and uh, I actually know um, Burroughs himself. Yeah, I do know know the um, or what was it called the the ventilation window whatever i know he's talking about i'm like oh yeah i remember the cars used to have that shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) um ventilator that's what it's called um but i I, I, the one thing i remembered about this and why i thought about this going into december is because out of everything in inter uh, in interzone that i read this story resonated was one story that always resonated with me um i think it's actually a very sweet story and um yeah i have to definitely give it full marks as well I don't. Uh, so I want to briefly mention. I don't know when to talk about this, so I'm just going to do it now. Um, I think Scott and you and I, and you've probably seen it before, Chris. There's a. I was going to mention in style. Short. If that's what you're going to do. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to put it towards the style of this of the story. But there's a short video that goes along with this. It's claymation. I think it was made in '93. So right when you were going to school, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I was part of it. Yeah, you were. You you it's were like one a, of the. I'm pretty sure it's a VH1 like production, or whatever. That's what the credits said. Uh, yeah, and like Francis Ford Coppola produced it. Uh, yeah. it's really interesting and definitely maybe I'll save that part for recommend <laughs> All right. now that I think about it but yeah it's uh, definitely check that out if you're going to read the video the that exists well. that's it's also narrated by Burroughs himself reading the yeah. story so it's yeah. pretty cool but anyways okay, so we're well, all giving it threes awesome threes all around and Scott would you like to discuss the themes uh, of this short I will story? certainly start out to, and I'll open it up but yeah I mean of course like I said a brief history of Burroughs is I, as I went through it. So it's going to be filtered through that light, through like the experience of being a person who's addicted to drugs and in, in this case, heroin. And so therefore like it may not speak to everybody, but I certainly think it speaks broadly about the human condition. So I think there's certainly that. And like, you might say like the spirit of Christmas as you maybe jokingly brought up, but I think that's there at the end, perhaps <laughs> if you wish it to be there. But also, I think you can take it that it's not that. If that is your Christmas wish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a pre-Bezos Christmas. So, like, yeah, it's not like... <laughs> yeah, okay. For now. But no, like, I think that's one of the major themes. Like, you're just uh, uh, sort of like how you like to say or enjoy, e, like, you know, down-to-earth, like, daily life stories. Like, the slice of life. And this happens to be a slice of life of a person in this uh, situation. So, I think it's well handled if I don't, like, connect with it as much personally. You fucking all drug fiends, apparently. <laughs> but... I still think it, it is certainly contained well enough there and through the story throughout, and you can extract it to a decent degree, depending who you are, from it. And I don't think it like distracts or there's nothing like heavy-handed or overtly like there about it. But I think it's just nicely contained throughout. The one th- part about that I would disagree with is, well, yes, it's there, but I think that it's more of a stylistic look into how mm. he works where the main theme of this is a, a Christmas tale through sure. this is a Burroughs family Christmas. <laughs> okay, um, sure, sure. Yes, it is. I like how we keep coming up with things like that, but I, I see what you mean and expound. So, uh, so this is as much uh, what the uh, Christmas Carol is to Charles Dickens as but it's his definition of what uh, that mm-hmm. or the gift of the magi, I think, as you brought up either before mm-hmm. uh, um, before the cast, like, and that's which we've also done. Yeah. <laughs> Go it's, listen. It's, it's, it's okay. Or something it's, like it's, that. It's, you're saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's not anything different than that. Aside from just, mm-hmm. it's like if Tim Burton made a, <laughs> uh, a Christmas thing, it would be a Tim Burton style yeah. Christmas tale, but it's still the Christmas tale. Nightmare Before uh, Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I just see what you mean so. That does sort of like 
made me second like second think it. So what do you got, Chris, in terms of themes? Uh, I was uh, that was one of those nebulous things where I agree with things you both said. Um, I kind of could consider there's elements of loss, there's elements of despair, there's elements of hope, there's elements of generosity. Um, Christmas spirit. A Christmas I mean, that's spirit. That's what it's all about. Seriously. No, but I mean, I think one of you guys said it best, and I, I think it was a sky, I think compared it to uh, Hemingway last year, that for such a short story, there's a lot in here. And this movie, this, as with, um, this the, movie, uh, as with this movie, as with Hemingway, <laughs> it's, everything's in the moment. You're in the moment. I mean, this thing takes, I mean, probably takes place in a longer period of time than, um, Hemingway did. So thematically, I, I, I kind of feel like it was like with Hemingway where it's like from moment to moment, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with mm-hmm. despair? Are we just, are we dealing with, I mean, because in a lot of ways you read this and you're like, this should be a really depressing story, but it's not. It kind of is. <laughs> I, I, I think mean, it depends on what you I mean, all right, personally you, It could be a it. drugstore cowboy or uh, something <laughs> like that where you just want to like, or what was that movie with um, Ellen Bernstein? Uh, anyway. Uh, are we one hundred percent sure he didn't die at the end? That's what well, I'm saying. That's it's the, but very that's open the, question. That's the that's the other thing. Did he die? Did he just you know give into uh, his uh, addiction? He was filled with the Christmas spirit. Yeah, it's maybe it can't be much clearer and than he's that. He's filled with the Christmas Christmas spirit, and then he's on the knot again. Uh, like in the here's, taxi driver. <laughs> here's a real here's a real theme of this. Christmas miracles happen all the time. You get a fucking suitcase filled with legs. <laughs> it's a fucking Christmas miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. I guess it could be depending hey, who you are. For him, it was. He made some money off of that well, suitcase legs, that somebody left there. Sure. And well, then, and then he goes to the doctor. The doctor gives him free drugs. Christmas miracle. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he goes and passes the Christmas miracles on <laughs> to his guy, who the guy who Santa Claus came himself to <laughs> inject the Christmas yeah, terror. Exactly. <laughs> And instead of like gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you have the package in the car he couldn't get to. You've got the the, <laughs> sure. the thing with the legs he could get. I'm a man. And like... then you've got the <laughs> then you got the then you got the tab of uh, morphine that he scored. Uh-huh. Yeah, like that's maybe that, that's obviously a bit more jokey. But I'm not saying you also don't have a point to it. I'm not entirely sure. That's I mean I said it as a joke, but I'm not entirely sure that's not what he was going for. I think it kind of is. It's tough because like <clears throat> you, you, your argument sort of made me like second guess my sort of default one that was coming into it with. But I think all right. I think I'm going to stick with the one, and here's why, after having said what we all said about themes, that because you can get so much out of it, or see it as like a shallow thing that doesn't matter anyways, I think that's still somehow like a meta one, because you can, we all just got different somewhat variations on a theme out of the story. So that's that, my argument for one, because of what we all just discussed. And again, that is rem- reminiscent of the Hemingway, because we all sure. kind of did have a different sure. And I'm not on... disagreeing with that either. It is similar. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to give this a one as well. Um it's there's something there's something in the reading of this that um gets you like you know, Burroughs writing, of course, but like, you know, it it stirs your emotions when you read this. And I think that there is a lot to be said like the gen- the like the twisting of the like generous spirit theme, you know, like mm. Um, Even if it's subverting it, as I'm saying, it's still yeah, there, right? And I and I kind of like what he's doing with that in terms of this uh, short story. Right. So I'm going to give it a one as well for themes. I agree with you, Steve. So I'm going to give it. Oh, a you one. flipped as well. Thank you. No, I I never said yeah. I was going to give it. A, oh, okay. I'm just, yeah. I thought I'm just saying it's a very Christmas type thing, and that does not make, doesn't make it inherently bad. All right, um, fair enough. Um, and, and Christmas has always been filled with dark uh, mm-hmm. themes. <laughs> There's, I think, a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is racist. Um, True. There's that yeah. very famous Christmas song about rape. Um, <laughs> uh, so like, there's a big, it's been dark there's a big conversation Christmas. happening about that song right, right now. We can talk about it another time. Talk about it right now at this moment. Go look, uh, it, go look it up if you so guys want. I, I don't see anything out of place with having a story about a junkie celebrating Christmas. Mm-hmm. No one. I, I'm giving it one. Okay. Well, then, Ian, who and or what is our antagonist? Well, it would be easy for me to say that heroin is the antagonist, or more specifically, the lack thereof. <laughs> uh, however, I'm also going to put in to the fact like it's really the, the law's use, or 
the lost conflict with drug culture and that everything would have worked fine if uh, Joey from Brooklyn had another guy to work with or Pete the Greek mm. didn't go uh, get arrested for selling. Like, heroin's destructive, but so is the, uh, like, in a sense, society's oppression of it. Mm-hmm. And, the methods of combating oh, it. You're seeing someone who is just out of prison, is desperate to get it, willing to steal, willing to ignore an obvious murder um, that just happened in order <laughs> to get something it. shady. At least. So, yeah, so I'm going to say that that is uh, uh, the war on drugs. I, was gonna say, all right. I like hmm. to think that they just cut off her legs. It wasn't a murder. Did they, say there was they, no blood. They sewed her back up. <laughs> she was fine. There was a line that said there was no blood on the package or whatever when he found the lake. Yeah, they were neat. But I do like your argument of like he's basically a casualty of the war on drugs, more or less. And like considering it, it was released in a story, uh, and a collection did, that was released in uh, did we say 89. What, you said it was 89? Okay. Yeah. So it yeah, like I kind of like that. You're right, Ian. Sorry, sorry, Chris. No, uh, go on. You're right that it would be like easy and like the obvious answer is drugs and in this case, subclass heroin. But like I do like the argument there because I think Burroughs, like I said, lived through it and experienced it and therefore had something to say perhaps more relevant about it than most other like authors who were like urban people who were interested in it but weren't experiencing it firsthand. If you, if it was this day and age, you could just go to the doctor, get prescribed Oxycontin. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, sure. I mean, you're absolutely right about that. They, they, but... give, they give out heroin like candy nowadays, <laughs> um, including to kids. So, um, In the form of literal candy. Yeah. It uh, still no. does cost money, though, so you'd be, you'd be in trouble if you didn't have it. Sure. But no, I do like that angle, and I, I think I'm going to also like agree, at least to call it the protag- or the antagonist in the story because of that, and not just take the easy out of blaming blaming the drugs. Don't blame the heroin. Blame what, how we use it and what to do about it. I agree with the I agree with the end. That was excellent, and I think to add to that was the uh, doctor because hmm. he the doctor is kind of judging him at the same time. Danny's like. He's an alcoholic. Like he walks down the hall and he can smell the alcohol. Yeah, you can see it on him. And, and but the, Danny's judging the shit out of him at the same time. Yeah, well, but the, the, but the doctor's thing. kind of taking the higher ground. But but what I'm saying, but the thing is, it shows so. the levels of um, you know, addiction. And Danny is just happens to be on the uh, alcohol's legal, but heroin isn't. So Danny's caught on the this side of the war on drugs. They're both addicts, but he's got the. Ex- I'm not saying I'm not saying addiction's a good thing. I'm just saying from the perspective of that, you've got like the acceptable, like whether it's alcohol or nicotine, and you've got the re- sure. the, the rejection of it. So uh, that was a, that's uh, I like what you said, and I'm gonna give it a one. Yeah, yeah. Are we sure that the kid with the kidney stones at the end is not the antagonist? Because mm. because of him, I think that I think the main character dies at the end. Yeah, I got that. Danny's dead because of this kid. He couldn't get his fix. Well, not because and it killed of him. him and it killed him, god damn it. No good deed goes unpunished. No. <laughs> that's, that's the real <laughs> That's theme. the theme of the story. No Maybe. good deed goes unpunished. Maybe. I mean, I, like uh, I said, Z-Vote, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, obviously, I don't think that that is the antagonist. But um, <laughs> you, you guys make really good points. I think that, and Ian specifically for kicking it off there, I think that the... Uh, there's a problem, and, and I think that Burroughs was trying to dig into the problem with the way that society, and specifically the law, looks at sure. drug addiction. Wrapped in a and, Christmas, too. You know, heroin addiction in and of itself, uh, like, it, specifically. And I think that it's portrayed in this, in, like, it's ne- it's never like, you know, the main character goes off on a rant about it. It's just portrayed in, like, sure. here's yeah. what happens to you when you are an addict who has no money you're looked at like a scumbag junkie who has no money basically and um yeah i think i think it's a really effective uh part of this to story. moralize some more please uh, please do uh, on this on this uh i guess right before christmas sure uh actually the fact that he gets let out of jail right on a street to just go his own way mm-hmm. There is no I, I, support. Yeah. There's no support for him to break that cycle, and if anything, it pushes him right into criminality immediately. No, you're uh, right. And that is that is something that's, that happens uh, in real prisons and in real jails, mm-hmm. where just people go right back to their neighborhoods, right back to the dealers that used to hook them up, mm-hmm. and 
I think I, yeah, sure, I, 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 I hope that I, I'm, I'm sure that he actually meant a lot of what now that we're actually talking about the themes of, that are in this uh, yeah <laughs> criminal <laughs> justice <laughs> reform because it all comes back down to that but no but there's it's it's very it's a actually a really tragic piece so yeah absolutely I was going to give it a zero to begin with because I was kind of saying it jokingly but <laughs> well, no, I mean, now we built it up it's, really yeah. well. it's bittersweet <laughs> one of you said it was sweet because I'm like it's certainly sweet to some degree but also bitter yeah it is definitely bittersweet but, but no I do like the angle we just said and that's I think a good very good argument for giving it calling that the antagonist and giving it a one yeah because mm-hmm. the more we talk about it I'm like oh yeah sure um, oh yeah and well no I mean because it's just like we're, we're on yes. themes and everybody's bringing up more of it um, and it's to me with protagonists and I got Danny the car wiper, and I'm definitely getting. That's him. who you got. I got him. I got the car. I got him. I, for whatever reason, when you started saying that, I thought you were just gonna say, "I got Dick." I got. I got nothing. Sorry. Go on. Go on. Um, Sorry. I got three bucks in my pocket. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, it's Danny, and there would be no story without him. Um, I find, I, I find, I find him like a um, very sympathetic person. Like I don't. And I think this adds credence to Ian's um, – one, one of the themes Ian brought up is because you have a guy who's like – and all these people are like kind of resolved to their station in life. Mm. And he immediately, as you said, goes out and hits the streets. But it's – he there's an uh, – there's – simultaneously there's desperation and, you know, kind of like this resolution of like, well, this is the way things are. I'm sweating. I got to get a fix, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think – I. I don't know. I think he, I think as with the themes and everything else in this thing, I think he's a character that could have been done very simply, but he's got a lot of complexity to him. Um, given the fact that there's probably not a lot of time to get to know him in like four or five pages that the story is. Um, I think he's a really effective protagonist. And like I said, without him, there would be no story. So if not, I'm for both the fall and, in the matter of like finding him effective, I'm going to give him one as a protagonist. So two points here. One is really stupid, and the other is really, uh, really serious. Uh, Danny the car wiper. I don't know if any of you have seen Dora the Explorer. <laughs> yes. Wiper no wiping. <laughs> no. I I thought of that. But good reference. I suppose if you do get it. <laughs> nickel bag. Nickel bag. Nickel bag. <laughs> okay. But. Uh, in all seriousness, though, he has the pragmatism of an addict throughout all of this work. That how am I going to like? I don't like this person, but he's a friend of mine. If we can find uh, drugs together, uh, and he's pragmatic up until the very end when he has a real. It's, it's a legitimately real change of heart mm-hmm. to everything that's been built up about this character to give up his drugs for someone else, and then perhaps that I didn't get it that he was uh, he died. But I mean, it's he might not have. I mean, it's it's very yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think it was quite open ended. I think that's sort of the point, like the intention. Of Pearl. Yeah, was it the Christmas spirit? Was he? Did he? Or was the sp- uh, Grim Reaper? Yeah. Did he? Did, was it the Christmas spirit? Or was it was the, the spirit Grim of Christmas Reaper? to some degree. The spirit of death. <laughs> yeah, uh, some kind of spirit, regardless. But the, the very fact that because he had that change of heart um, for a, I guess, noble cause, mm. uh, made him a complex character. So I'm going to give him one for that. Yeah, I'm pretty giving him a pretty solid one. Like, I, I thought that he was well drawn. If I wasn't particularly sympathetic to him, even though like it was Burrow set him up to be not, and then of course at the end to be. But like you said, he I certainly believed the character in the brief time that the story uh, you know <clears throat> fleshes him out to the degree that it does. So yeah, I think he was effective, of course, and you're seeing the world through his eyes. And like you said, if you're a person who's been through the same thing then it seems believable it seems to me it was a realistic portrayal and and you do get a bit more of his like personality and his like sense of who he is and how he goes about his life throughout again like i said it compressed time so yeah i think bros did a good job drawing Dan- danny the car wiper as a protagonist and he certainly is the focal point and the driving point of the plot and many of the themes as well so i have to give him a solid one yeah you guys have said most of the things that i was going to say I-, I think that he um does a great job of making the audience feel what he's feeling and yeah and yeah well said i think that's the most important thing for a character like this and the change of heart at the end kind of gives like this little glimpse of uh, the hope that there is in in like any perhaps you know in any uh dire situation or any like you know dark hole that you're in that that 
there's never like no way back or whatever, you know. I think that's kind of the what he's going for. And as a character, I I believe it of him, even though he's set up as this character who like really just wants to score. But there's little like things throughout that, and just little things that he thinks that like kind of show. Um, but he's that kind of showcases his humanity before yeah. you know the big turn at the end. And I think that's really well drawn. And the Grinch's heart and veins grew uh, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit that day. Three sizes that sure. day it was too much for him to take. That's why he died at the end. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so that's ones all around. And Steve, why don't you continue with supporting? Well, all right. Um, there are a few supporting characters in this. There's, uh, I was gonna. There's actually a surprising, like a more, more than you would think for such a short yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the doctor that he gets the morphine from, um, who is an interesting little aside. There's the guy who's owns the car that he's trying to steal, like Rob, the Florida guy. <laughs> yeah, random angry Florida the, man. The Florida man the, strikes against Steve. The hick who was gonna call the cops. Yeah, Florida man again. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, anyway. Um. You know, there's there's like the George the Greek character off camera and just like who got mentioned. pinched recently. Um, there's the fence guy, I guess that's a, a Gimpy. Gimpy or whatever. Yeah, you know, Gimpy. That he sells the trunk to. Uh, yeah. There's the, the legs that are in the trunk. <laughs> supporting character. I think so. Well, they were think very well described. No they had, per- yeah. they had <laughs> some, <laughs> got some junk in the trunk. It's more of a prop to They me. had personality. More less of a prop to the character <laughs> who, who is now missing them. <laughs> um, Sorry, go on. I don't know. What do you, like, what do you, what do you guys? Do you have any other ones? Uh, well, the the, the kid at the end, the kid with the kidney yeah, stones at the end. Of course. And that's yeah. You're right. Like that's like what five or six. There's you know he meets his friend like you said Joey from Brooklyn or whatever. Again briefly, but an unbelievable interaction. Right. As we said. So like yeah, the while they're of course they're not like the most fleshed out characters. Certainly less so than he is, and he's not like the most hundred percent fleshed out character because in a story of this nature, there's not going to be enough time to do all that. I would think. And we said that before, previous um, stories are like this, but I always sort of go with this where if they're believable enough in, the, in service of the world and the story and themes, etc., I think they all work in their own way, of course, because they, they, they're they all they're all facets of something. They all add up to a one, even if each of them is maybe like a 0.25 or less than that each. Well, so, I was going to say really quickly, uh, just one sentence. Uh, I think that you instantly get a feel for each one of these characters, and I think that's what... Yeah, makes uh, them yep, good well supporting characters. But you yeah. you get them through uh, Danny's heroin adult <laughs> mind. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and in a sense, sure. you You're also right. see them and do how they can benefit or hinder him in scoring. Mm-hmm. So again, I like it. I'm not going to give it a point um, because I mean, like they're interesting characters. Mm-hmm. But again, they're all. For that point I just made, uh, that's the reason I'm going to give it a zero. Mm, I do like that argument. I'm not sure if it sways me, but it's a very interesting angle. What do you think, Chris? What do you got, Chris? I'm going to, for the same reasons, I know we keep referring it to, but the, the similarities that um, the Hemingway thing, like even like these these fleeting things, even though that that, that Danny's more of an unreliable narrator, let's say, um, because this is more of a... This is a for you know. This is more of a first person, not really, but it more kind of. It feels like that. It yeah, feel, but, yeah, it's got that feeling to it, and because he is like you said, you're seeing it through his you know as adult as, senses. As, exactly, yeah. and I, I kind of, um, I don't know. I found all these people interesting, even if they were brief, just like the soldier on the street in the uh, in the Hemingway story. Um, I wish we had done other stories uh, recently, so I can make comparisons too. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, as you're talking. I'm trying to think of a rebuttal to what we've done in the past. <laughs> yeah, uh, I sure. can't. Um, but anyway, I'm going to give them a one. I, I I thought they were just yet another part of the texture that was integral to the story, and I thought they were more than window dressing. I thought yeah, that's they, pretty much I found them interesting. Pretty much what I'm saying and what I think as well. Even though, like I said, I like his argument there for giving zero, and I have no problem with doing that either. I think that I may. Go with Ian's argument on this. Um, and I don't begrudge you guys for that at all. Nope. Just, nice. just because in the way that they are, they're basically characters all in the main character's mind, in Danny's mind, who hmm. don't really have an existence of their own. They're like whatever he needs at the time. They, they're they like 
portrayals of his needs. And in that sense, they're all him. So I definitely gave him a mm, one. Interesting. But they almost don't exist, right? To, uh, yeah. In the way like that I I'm get, I get. Mm. I might flip on it because I, I do think it's a perfectly valid argument and interpretation. And as you guys have both just talked out, I'm kind of thinking about it and seeing it more and more. I might have to flip. Even though I do think, they agree, they do add a bunch of texture. It's all texture like as Danny. You know what I mean? Yeah. From Danny, if you will. <laughs> Danny texture. Sorry about that description, <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm going to flip to a zero on it. Not, no. through, not through fault of the story. Perhaps it's even more effective, but that means in this instance, the secondary characters are going to be a zero. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stay I like with it. Well I'm done, s- boys. Stick with the one there. I'm, still, I'm hey. sticking with the one. All right. I, I mean, I totally see your point. And I was really close, but I'm like, all right. Um, so Scott, why don't you continue with dialogue, sir? So, so I'll tend to be brief because the dialogue in this story is, is kind of brief. Like... Here's the thing, and like you said, Chris, it's, I don't mean to keep comparing it, but since the most recent thing we did was Hemingway, but even so, even like if I d- disregard that, it's believable. It's the things that these characters in this situation, I think, would be saying to each other in this instance. Is it like astounding? No, because it's just like, hey, how you doing? Hey, you, you know, you know you, were you up on 31st Street or whatever? <laughs> Anything happening up there? You know, like it's all just conversational stuff. So I can't give it a zero per se. I'll give it a default like okay one because if it wasn't believable i give it a zero but because it yep. works perfectly well just within the framework and what the setup is so i don't remember the dialogue at all because you don't remember conversations that you have like i remember his stylistic descriptions right and the, sure. uh, kind of the beat mm-hmm. nature of that i just don't remember what the, the melding between his inner thoughts and him having conversations with people blends together Mm. Completely I see different. what you mean. So do I give that a zero or do I give that a one? I think if you give it a zero here, you guess you give style more points or like if you're wavering on it. It's a good, it's a good question. I see what you mean. Well, I'm going to give... I'm probably going to give dialogue a one for the reason I'm that... I'm going to give it a default one, but... Um, in terms of this, I, I don't remember specific lines of dialogue, but I remember... But like I said, every, it's all just like I remember um, every um f- like feeling that I had while the dialogue was going on. I know what the di- I know like what all the dialogue was. I just don't remember what the words that were used were. If you, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No. Here, I'll read you a quick interaction you know, when he goes to Gimpy. <laughs> yeah. That helps. What What was in it? Just talking about the tr- trunk. Nothing. What's the matter? I don't pay enough. I tell you, there wasn't nothing in it. Okay. So somebody travels with empty suitcase. Okay. For Christ's sake, can be give me a nickel. You got somebody else. Why don't he give you a nickel and so on? Actually, yeah. I think that was easily the best part of di- the best dialogue of this entire story. But it's but... still so like mundanely conversational. You know what I mean? Not that saying that's bad, but because it makes sense to the situation. I I don't know. I really like that exchange. Um, and but again, like I'm not. Gonna, I would never remember like the phrases that happened in that exchange. Sure. But I remember really enjoying that exchange while I, I was you. reading it. Um. So I'm gonna give dialogue a one for that. I'm going with a softish one, but still a one. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a one. Okay, I will go with a one as Prepare well. Policy. Although I don't really have a particularly good or bad reason <laughs> to give it. <laughs> no, in the spirit I, of Christmas, he's giving it a one instead of a zero. His his Merry heart, Christmas, bro. <laughs> your heart grew. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, and Ian, why don't you tell us about the style? Ooh, uh, I really, 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 really enjoy the beat poetry. Of the whole thing, yeah. um, I said poetry, but like there is a the poetic style, quality. There is, yeah. Of course, absolutely. His work. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna, I, I, it's it's weird. I, I can either gush over this or I can just uh, say read it so you can enjoy it. And I'm going to say that yeah, like it should, it's something to be enjoyed and not hear us talk about. <laughs> yeah, it. I agree. The sensation is much better just reading. We'll the do story. much better. I, I, I'm going to say this though. Um, it's probably one of the more accessible. Uh, bros yeah. stories out there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. no, I can see what you mean. But there, there, yeah, there's never read shorter them. stories that are. Yeah. It, it can be a little like it's hard to get into at sometimes, but I really like Bukowski, and this is the first Burroughs thing I ever uh, read, uh-huh. and they remind me yes. of each other. Mm-hmm. Quite I can bit. see that for sure as well, um, because it's like you said, so, sort of like the beat, co- sort of like culture overall, like the beat sensibilities. I guess we'll I almost say. I almost um, said that earlier about Bukowski because uh, that's the type of 
so you thought dialogue it. that you get yeah. from Bukowski. So while we were talking about dialogue, I almost mentioned yeah. that, but uh, I'm glad that you brought it up now. No, yeah, um, you're right. You see, it seems obvious in retrospect, but it does make sense, and I think it's <clears> valid. <throat> so yeah, like it's uh, you mentioned it earlier, and I'll I'll add onto it here. The video that goes along with it that they did for this um, story, hearing Burroughs read it, there's something like even more grittily real about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Same with Bukowski. Have you ever heard Bukowski read off any of his work? Yeah, for sure. So again, that's another similarity there, but it's very, very effective and it's still effective just reading it, but I'm just saying like the way he knows his own style and then reads it to you, I think. But even so, like this is still perfectly fine. Again, it's, it's short to the point, but has that sense of sort of underlying poetry to it. Mm -hmm. So I certainly, uh, I think it deserves a one in terms of that. I agree. Yep. One's... Ones, ones, ones. Okay, and this is me with recommendation. And as I said before, I read this in 93, and um, it has resounded with me all these years. And I can't believe I I hadn't thought about it up until now, but um, I'm definitely recommending it. I think, as I said before, I think it's one of Burroughs' more accessible stories. I think there's a lot to it, Mm -hmm. and um, I really recommend it. Gentlemen? I uh, I read this for the first time in uh, December 2018, and uh, since then it's resonated with me as well. <laughs> um, I know. I, I again, I really like this style Stories of, of work, nature, yeah. Yeah. and uh, so I would definitely recommend this. It's right up my alley. Yeah, I certainly would too. Like, while it's not my number one choice of style, I am of course I have read a bit of Burroughs here and there throughout the course of my studies and just uh, linguistical and literary uh, endeavors. But yeah, I think this is a very solid one. Like you said, Chris, it's a bit more, probably more accessible than some of the other stuff. And I think it's a damn good story. And it, it takes you like 10, 15 minutes to read and get through. And you can certainly appreciate it for the various angles that we talked about. It's it's better than uh, It's a Wonderful Life for Christmas. Uh, yes, uh... <laughs> definitely read the story. Read the story and watch the accompanying video, as I mentioned. And uh, 100% better than Wonderful and Life. Skip it. And you'll have a lot yeah. more time left over at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So. Completely agree. Yeah, even if you read this and then watch the video, you'll still have a lot more time. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a it's a great short story. It's not long. It won't take you long to read. And if you want to kind of go be a heroin addict that, by proxy, <laughs> if you want to kind of go into like a darker place for a little bit and uh, read about something like interesting, uh, you know, a, a, a day in the life of that, you know. It, this you could do way worse than this mm. one, and um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a one uh, for that as a recommendation. Excellent, gentlemen. Okay, so what do we got? All right, I gave it a ten. The three of you gave it a nine, which gives us an aggregate score of nine point two five. Yep, I think it's that's pretty, pretty damn score. good, Burles. Yeah. No doubt. Um, but any last thoughts on Burroughs? No, I think we said what we said, and like we said, check it out. Nine point two five. It's pretty fucking good. You can get a movie and a and a and some a high story quality H, in less of a some, time. Some high quality H storytelling right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and anything. Okay. Well, everybody, happy holidays, happy New Year. I've been Chris Morgan here with Jonathan Ian Manzer. You won't nod reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Thurlow. Still waiting for my man. And Stephen Amosi. Good night. Good night. See you next time. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.